This week's 1044 is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. While the supply chain as a whole has rebounded post-COVID, challenges have persisted through 2023. What's the outlook heading into 2024? You're watching CCJ's 1044, a weekly webisode that brings you the latest trucking industry news and updates from the editors of CCJ. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you'll never miss an installment of 1044. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jason Cannon and my co-host on the other side is Matt Cole. It's almost 2024. Happy early new year and hang in there. We've almost made it to the end of 2023. It's often considered that when rates are down for trucking companies, shippers are doing well. And while that can be the case for transportation costs, that's not necessarily the whole picture. Blue Grace Logistics publishes a quarterly confidence index based on survey responses from shippers in their network that forecasts the upcoming quarter. Its latest release, looking at Q1 for 2024, offers some insight into how shippers feel about the health of the market going into the new year. Joining us this week is Jason Lockard, Blue Grace Logistics Senior Vice President of Managed Logistics, who talks about the latest confidence index and what it could mean for motor carriers. Blue Grace Logistics is a third-party logistics company based out of Tampa, uh, Florida corporate office. Uh, our business is kind of bifurcated around the managed logistics channel for Blue Grace. Obviously, that's uh, transportation management for clients that are looking for more uh, business process outsourcing for us to manage, uh, be a lot deeper into their supply chain and manage that logistics function for them. We are supported heavily by uh, a best-in-class truckload brokerage, as well as many other shared services within Blue Grace that help complement that for us. A lot of indices out there, obviously, that have a sort of look in the past. We love data here. We love to share market insights with our clients. And what we were missing is sort of a, a, a good forecast and really nobody has a crystal ball, right? But we have something unique, which is a, a set of customers in those two different areas of the business that I mentioned before, where we have a group of contract clients where we're managing multiple modes of transportation for them. Whether we execute it or not, we still have visibility to the data. We have a relationship with those customers. And then our brokerage side, much bigger labels on that side, you know, Fortune 500 type companies. But the survey or index, logistics confidence index, is a forecasting index. And that is taking the sentiment from those customers, looking at three primary metrics, revenue, inventory, and order levels. And we, we picked those three as they were not directly tied to transportation. It, it, we didn't ask about shipments or modes. Um, but more how they're going to be, what the, what they forecast or foresee or project what their business is going to do in the upcoming quarter. So the data that we're going to look at here or that you that, that we're publishing is what our customer's opinion of Q124 is going to be. Blue Grace's latest index shows shippers expect revenues to remain steady in the first quarter, while inventory levels and orders are expected to increase. Since, you know, 2023... Coming into 2023, so end of 24, there was a lot of positivity. A lot of people thought that uh, things were going to pick up and, and really get rolling. And, and obviously, that didn't quite happen. It was, let's call it, muted all year. Um, and then uh, we did have a pretty good retail spike here at the end, you know, at, at Black Friday. And, uh, the, you know, let's call it a little bit of a rebuild on the backside of that, you know, for Christmas. So pretty decent consumer spending, maybe a slightly better than what a lot of people thought. And uh, that was our, you know, our forecast going in, you know, for the logistics confidence index that we that we ran coming into Q4. Seems like it that played out. And so what what we're seeing for Q124 as it relates to revenues, there's just been a slight shift from let's call it folks that were neutral are you know maybe moving a little bit into the negative territory, which just means we're we're just going to be conservative with the inventory we have left. Maybe we didn't sell through everything that they had. But there's a slight uptick on the positivity side. So there's going to be some folks that are rebuilding some of that stock. But for the most part, just kind of status quo, right? It's going to most likely be flat based on the results in this survey. Um, the, the next metric for uh, inventory levels, uh, that first one was revenue. The, the next metric on inventory levels is, is uh, again, possibly, you know, look, you know, we're a lot more positivity going from 45% to 51% posi positivity. Um, and so more folks are, are, are looking to rebuild those stocks as they come into Q1. So things that were depleted in those in those warehouses, looks like they're going to be rebuilding a lot of that. And then the order levels, 
a much more positive view on that, which if revenue levels are going to be flat, inventory levels are going to be rebuilding, but order levels are going to be increasing, most likely there's going to be sales or reduction in in price. You know, they're the they're, they're not gonna we're not gonna see what we saw in 21, 22, obviously we're where things are just going skyrocketing and, and, and there's so much demand, there's not enough supply. So, you know, the Fed's done what, what they've had to do and interest rate wise, obviously inflation, the numbers are are looking better, closer to where they want them to be. So looks like that's sort of playing out with what we're seeing here as well. After a word from 1044 sponsor Chevron Lubricants, we'll hear from Jason on what this means for trucking fleets. Protecting your diesel engine and its after-treatment system has traditionally been a double-edged sword. The same engine oil that is so essential to protecting your engine's internal parts is also responsible for 90% of the ash that is clogging up your DPF and upping your fuel and maintenance costs. Outdated industry thinking still sees a trade-off between engine and emission system protection, and Chevron was tired of it. So they spent a decade of R&D developing a no-compromise formulation. Chevron Lubricants developed a new ultra-low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Delo 600 ADF with Omnimax technology cuts sulfate ash by a whopping 60%, which reduces the rate of DPF clogging and extends DPF service life by two and a half times. And just think what you can do with all the MPGs you're going to add from cutting your number of regens. Bedello 600 ADF isn't just about after treatment. It provides complete protection, extending drain intervals by preventing oil breakdown. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, and now you don't. 600 ADF from Dello with Omnimax technology, it's time to kick some ash. Good's a relative term, right? So <laughs> good for shippers, you know, if, if you're, Pulling on the price thread, obviously, it's a very good market for them to to bring down the cost on that. Although they're dealing with increased costs in pretty much every other area of their business, and so uh, it's it's sort of helping where they can't control some of the other things in the supply chain that are really uh, squeezing margins for them. If good is service, then I I think we're at this sort of equilibrium spot where you know the the carriers that uh, if we're if we're referring to truckload or LTL, I think the carriers that have always hung their hat on, we're going to provide the best in class service, maybe not always the cheapest price. They're very well positioned because they've never, their their pricing practice is very disciplined and they're not taking on business that's going to hurt them in the long run. And so I don't see that really changing very much. If anything, where there's a lot of capacity, it looks like, you know, the, the spot rates are still kind of haven't found complete bottom yet, which is crazy. You know, for those value creation type carriers, I think, uh, I don't think there's really any impact. They're going to continue to provide a great service for their customers, and the customers are willing to pay a little bit more for that in exchange to to service their clients. The big question everybody in trucking wants to know, but it's nearly impossible to answer, is when the market's going to flip back into carrier's favor. Everyone's sort of pointing to late Q2, Q3, probably not going to happen in Q1 type, type environment. So nothing... I would just say what we learned to your point with with what we had to experience post COVID, I believe we're going to have a better indication that it's coming than what we did before because uh, you know things got so upside down before uh, in the early parts of 21 where there just simply wasn't enough product to sell, and so you have these companies that just missed out on all these opportunities to sell to sell their product because the shelves were empty, they couldn't get the product, it was delayed in transit, capacity was tight couldn't find a truck, you had to overpay for it, all these things. And then that created a, a sort of knee-jerk reaction on the backside of that when things started to open up, people overbought inventory, made continued to make bad decisions, and then it kind of got stuck with it after that. And so I think we're back to a very disciplined supply chain management type of approach. And so when we do see the changes, the positive trends in the data, I think they're real. They're not going to be you know, oh, is this actually going to happen? I said, so I think when we start seeing the trends moving in the right direction, there's probably a lot more consensus, like I was referring to before with our index, or confidence that these these leading indicators are, are actually real. Based on feedback from Blue Grace's customers, the overall supply chain outlook for 2024 is pretty positive, both on the shipper and carrier side of the equation. You know, we're fortunate enough to have big retail customers in our portfolio and a lot of conversations with them again around discipline within the supply chain we're still in a mode of we don't want to bring in uh, inventory faster than we really have to have it on the shelf we also don't want empty shelves and so it's creating this balance 
I see that continuing to happen, although I, I, we're also having conversations and, and talking about their future projections for business. And almost all of those are pretty positive. They all think they're going to grow next year in, in terms of sales. And, and uh, there's even from talking to our carrier partners as well, there's still a lot of talk about opening up new facilities and bringing on more equipment. And so pretty consistently, not just one carrier, multiple carriers are all kind of saying the same thing. And so and some of that is replacing old equipment, but those are all still very positive signs that say we're going to eventually get back to you know a, a better environment here and not too worried about it. That's it for this week's 1044. You can read more on ccjdigital.com. While you're there, sign up for our newsletter and stay up to date on the latest in trucking industry news and trends. If you have any questions or feedback, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you can catch us again next week.